Hello everyone, welcome back to another Age of Empires 4 commentary. I am Beyond, and as always, thank you so much for all the support in the past couple videos and the channel as a whole. If you are enjoying the content, please do subscribe, and if you're enjoying this video itself, please do drop a like. Today we have another episode, episode 7, on our journey to Diamond. This is a series where we take our 2v2 cells, me and my friend John, and try to get to that coveted Diamond tier. Today, we have me playing as the English. Again, I will not be changing until Season 5. I did attempt the French once, and whew, we got absolutely roasted. On the other side, we have John as playing as the HRE. I think probably his best sieve at the current moment. Ran out of a little bit of food there. Incredibly unfortunate timing, if we're going to be honest, when I panned over. We have Timog in the green as the French... And we have Invisible Cal 1 as the English in the purple. In today's 2v2 match, we're just trying to focus on getting, just getting some, just practicing the basics, how to get better and better. I don't want to just always go all in in Feudal Age, because um, honestly, it's not going to help me too, too much. While I love the aggression, I also need to get a little bit better as if that push doesn't work. Or if that push only gets like a little bit done and I need to do a little bit more in terms of like I need to practice what's happening on the back end. Now this game I decided to focus a little bit more on getting sheep early on and it kind of paid off. I think I have a, a gaggle of I have a herd of 10 uh, maybe 9 and I should there should be one more yeah this sheep over here. I don't know if I get that one but I tried to make sure that I got the sheep um, over here as quickly as possible and then moved out on the map pretty quickly so I could secure the remaining sheep that were on the map and I was able to scoop up a bunch of them this pocket over here and this pocket over here which was a nice improvement um, for my normal like one to two sheep that I get so it's just baby steps um, and doing my absolute best to see what I can do here to just get a little bit better each time that's what I'm trying to do every time um, that being said, you will not stop hearing those jokes and the things of how they're going down because I still mess up a ton and we're not, we're not going to be perfect. Um, but we'll, we'll try. Um, I tried this game as well to focus. I was like, I cannot have another game where I have a lack of production buildings. Um, so I tried to focus on that, um, just to make sure that I got into a good spot. I put this council hall out here, and that is because I knew that my council hall was going to be a little bit faster because I've been scouting a lot. And two, I wanted to get the as many, um, I knew that I was across from the English, so I knew that if I did want to put on any sort of aggression, I needed a pretty forward council hall. Um, and that way too, it also prevented, it gave a little bit of protection to my gold. And I don't mean actual protection, I just mean that the knights would most likely path in here to get a little bit of protection over here from the TC um, and also the archers up in behind here so at least we'd have this but my also my plan was that I wanted to put it a little bit forward so that I could have quick reinforcements it looks like he's thinking the same thing um, so it does look like if I was able to um, scout that which I was if I was playing super smart I could have brought one more two people over here to finish this up even quicker and pump out a few archers and they would get there right in time there's the barracks coming down for my opponent as the english um because we are also um actually I, I, i'm not super sure i mean i guess it's because a lot of times the hre does go for those early stables so getting those horsemen out on the map um but we do see john throwing down his barracks um because obviously we're playing a french player um so it makes a lot of sense I am not because I'm not floating too, too much wood. I just had to go for this back wood, which is going to be a nice investment for later on. Um, as you can see, the other English player went for this little little piece of wood. I went for the lar longer term investment. I knew that my villagers were going to have to take an absolute distance to walk over here. And I was also betting on that the French player would focus most of his aggression this early night over yonder onto John. So I made sure that John was in an okay spot. He has his tower up, so he should be okay. Um, nice Aachen Chapel placement again. I mean, I probably, on this one, you could probably even consider putting it back here um, if you really wanted to, but this is totally fine for the gold production. Um, so I started to move. I started to get my scout 
I have a little gaggle, a little, a little squad over here, but nothing too crazy. I throw down my barracks because I'm not going to move out without those spearmen in tow. The knight is able to pick off one, so John only losing one villager, which is bound to happen against French players at this elo. Um, you're probably always going to lose a little bit of something. The English player, as you can see, getting a little bit of the same kind of composition that I'm getting. Um, the good news is, though, is that I'm constantly producing. Um, so let's see if we do this. Yeah. So I'm constantly trying to keep these low as possible. That's what I was trying my, my best to do for you guys is keep my resources low. Spend everything I possibly could um, so that I would make sure that I would be in a good spot. Um, I did queue up a few spearmen so I could have a nice little front line. Um, but yeah, I'm trying my best to spend everything. So I've already gotten forestry. I think once I get the 100 gold, I do double broad axe. Because once I click over it and see that I can get it, I started to do these things now. Uh, I'm trying to always make sure for villager production as well. So it's just these small things that we're starting to get better at. And here we go. The lads are moving out. Absolutely lovely. I love just the little, just such a casual jog to war in their little leather boots out here looking like little mini Robin Hoods. Just, just seeing what they can do. Um, I do see, I don't know if I saw those knights. I might have. Um, let's see. Where's my scout? My scout is not doing much. But here we go. I find this army. I'm like, oh, I can take that on. No problem. But he has knights over here. His knights, friends, I believe I saw this, so I start to move towards it. Now I see the knights, and I have to micro a little bit. And this is where I don't do super well. I should be shooting these archers right here. And that's what I think I did, but I misclicked, which is super unfortunate because I would have done a lot better. Um, these archers are taking out these spears, which I don't have to worry about. I need to worry about these archers right here. And I finally start to do that. So that was a huge mistake. If I just focused those down instead of messing around, I wouldn't have had to deal with any of this. Um, but now I take out that last archer. And I'm like, you know what? I can actually just shoot this knight. I believe those two knights could have taken me, but he doesn't want me to kill that knight. I do get it, which means it's a, it's a well sacrifice, right? We take out the early English army, and we do a lot of damage to this knight. If I can take him out, um, that would be even better. I don't think I'm able to because of... It's just not that much, but early, early nights um, into that many archers will still, you'll still be okay. But I really should have focused um, and focused down those archers because if I had done that, then I would have easily cleaned up that entire army. So, little small things there that I could do a little bit better at. Did we get the double broad axe? We, we did. We did. We got double broad axe. We have a nice little, nice little protection back here. I threw down just a tower just in case, just to save a few villagers if we get any knights in the back line. We see John throwing up the wall over here, um, and John has a little battalion of spears as well. I've decided just to like, we're just going to keep producing. I needed a farm. I was running out of food a lot, um, but now I'll probably flip to the other side. Um, but we are even getting a little bit better. Um, we have two villagers idle. What are, you, what are you lot doing? We need you to do something. There we go. I realize it a little bit. I, I move it to, a, to the wood line. Okay, so we're, we're sitting in a good spot there. I should probably be getting a little bit more gold um, so I can get a little bit faster of that castle age. Um, but that's okay. Um, probably should move a few more people over there. Only have two sitting there right now. Um, but again, totally okay. The French player is getting those archers as well, which is a standard classic. Um, and it's going to be something that the French will always do. We see John getting the stone so he can get a little bit of a second TC going on, which is always really nice. We have this scout just coming over here, getting some info, as you will. Um, but almost instantly, I take that out. And I start to move out. I'm starting to feel pretty good about the spot that I'm in. I have this army over here. Um, should be able to take out this army as well if I need to. Um, but he is in Network of Castles. Um, so I, sh I shouldn't fight this for too, too long. I think I try to pick off one archer over here. And I get a little bit of a... I didn't A move, but I wasn't trying to A move because I didn't want it just to attack anything. Um, so, But I should have been a little bit more understanding of where I was at. But I think I am in a good spot, taking out a bunch more. Decide to retreat um, and get one more shot for as I go. 
And that army is pretty injured. I'm still sitting at the higher count, as you can see, six archers, and I still have nine. Um, so I didn't lose it. I'm getting a lot better also at trying to like trade when I can trade and then falling back when I don't need, when I'm not going to win the trade. Um, so we're sitting here still doing a decent job producing. We had the blacksmith coming in. Let's see if the English player also has blacksmith. No blacksmith for the my English opponent, um, so I am sitting in a decent spot. The knights are coming, um, but that's something that John is seeing over here. He he sees the scout and he's like, "Are you close?" I'm like, "No, no, don't go in." I moved all the way back. Wait for me to get there. So I believe um, the boys are still running away. There we go. We finally change. Now the English player does see John, but John moves back because I am not in a position. And I'm like, "All right, where are you attacking from?" The middle. Okay, let's do this. So now I move out my squad down the middle. And where do those where those knights go? So we see John picking off one of the archers, which is nice. This triggers the knights and the archers to move forward. I'm like, dude, move back. Um, we need to fight together. In 2v2s, it's all about that one influx point. As if you can take out their army and you guys can fight together, you'll be in a good spot. The English player... Um, not doing super well. This is incredibly inefficient. This is why I moved back here um, off the rip. So hopefully our English friend back there changes it up a little bit, because um, if not, it's going to be a it's going to be a rough time for him, honestly. But that's okay. Um, the French player is also doing pretty decent, um, but just has this band of knights. If he loses these six knights, it's going to be a really rough time. And John sees him. And we're trying our best to track them down. But these things are so annoying. As you can see, we find them. But we're not going to get that much damage on them because I A move, which is nice. We're trying to get some damage on it. But these knights just sprinting away at all costs. These are, This army won't do anything either. And I feel like I make a, a, a move here that I normally would never ever make. But I was like, I'm not playing this chasing game. Forget this. I go, John... Can you chase him down with your spears? And he says, I think I can do it. I think we will be fine. I'm like, okay, you know what? If all of his knights are over yonder, forget this. I eventually, I about face and go, okay, I'll just move and I'll go across the map over here. Now I will say he is has a nice army over here, but my English longbowmans with also, I also have um, more on the way. Um, I have plus one. I should be getting housed. This is when I should be dropping down a few more production facilities. I'm trying to find the sweet spot one to do that. I see that I'm floating some of this, but I'm also thinking I want to go to Castle Age too, which is why I'm starting to float these resources over here. Here comes down the production that I wanted. Um, just a few more. I'm seeing that I have a lot of food and a lot of gold. Um, so I throw down barracks and an archery range because uh, I think I want to make a composition of um, men at arms, and I want to go for uh, crossbowmen. Now, we can see that this army is moving out at a very unfortunate time. I think he's trying to save these knights. He's going to be in for a rough awakening when John finally corners him, uh, if he does. And it looks like John is going to get. That is so annoying. As you can see, I'm going up to Castle Age over here, dropping down on these deer. Because um, I want to just, like I said, spend the resources that I have. So I'm like, you know what? Forget this. John's playing merry-go-round, and I know that he's gonna have no one in base. I obviously got lucky that they decided to move out at the most unfortunate time ever for this army, but I absolutely start to clean house. That was a misclick right there. Um, but every villager, I get one more, and again, misclick there. And I go, you know what? That's not where all of his villagers are. I'm sure there's some in the tree line as well. So forget this. I'm moving out, and we see that. Um, his response was to immediately throw up a tower, which is a decent response, but I'm going to get there just in time, and we're going to attack move onto these villagers. Um, again, I attack move, so they attack the structure for some reason first, but I'm starting to clean this out. I'm going to kill all of these. This army is sacrificing for what the damage is being done on the economy, and I'm like, that is such a worth it trade. And now I see here, and I'm like, all right, now I'm just going to take out as many of these archers as I possibly can. So I start to move forward, I see the villager come out, and this is, I think, when I stop looking, because I'm like, you know what, I'm floating resources at the current moment, and I start to queue up the man-at-arms. Um, 
I realized that I have too much wood, so I think I move some of these over and build another farm. Um, or at least change the direction. There you go. I build another farm because I'm like, okay, I see that I'm floating too much wood. So we're getting, we're starting to get better. We're starting to deduce that I can do a little bit better here. Castle age, I'll be the first one to actually age up. And my score is low. That's because my army was eliminated. But the damage that I did was done, right? Because he has six villagers over here, five over here. And I'm assuming... And like 20. So I did, I think I did like 15 villager kills, maybe even more. So I'm over here sitting on a very blooming economy. This will be my third farm. So I might have a little bit too much food after this third farm, but we'll see. I got wheelbarrow. I got the um, first step of fertilization. So we're, we're hard chilling right now. John over here is just pumping out some more men at arms, starting to get the best he can. On the backside here has plenty of wood to go around. Our English player is throwing down a forward white castle, um, which I really don't like the position of this white castle. One, I feel like at this point in the game, when you see the other um, opponents are already in castle age, um, getting this white castle this far away from your base, you don't, you're don't you not in the position of map control. Um, you use your army to defend, while your our armies were kind of being used on the opposite side of things. So you don't really need to worry about this. Um, so, I mean, it's, it's, I mean, what is it going to protect? It's going to, you have a wall up and you have the, so you think I'm going to push through here when there's a huge middle opening. So that's, I mean, that was, I think that was a mistake, unfortunately for them. We have John preparing for Rams. And I was like, I'm not ready yet. Um, most of my army's over here and they don't even have the upgrades just yet. We have everything producing out of here and we needed to get, and there's the final upgrades for these men at arms. So they're sitting they're sitting quite nice. They have plus one, plus one. And I believe I'm saving up for that wedge rivets two, which is so, so important. Um, and once I get that, I'll be able to move forward. Um, as you can see, I started to really dwindle down this gold. I threw down another farm because I was like, why do I need deer? I can just do this over here. And just constantly producing villagers to this gold as well. Because um, that's what I need the most of is this man in arm production. And I've started to try to get better at not getting housed either. John is doing an at, is it doing a huge battle, um, which is great for him though because he has so many men at arms too that these archers don't do anything to these men at arms. They do a lot to the spearmen, um, but at this point I'm less worried about the knights and more worried about these damn archers, which is also why I decided to move into this kind of men at arms ball. I have 15 that are on the way, um, and I'm trying to just do my best to save John over here. Um, because he is, he's not doing well. He's being cornered. Is taking out the knights though, which is really, really nice. Um, and any of these knights taken out is great. I'm like, hey, if you can just last a little bit longer, um, I'm on my way. If I can curl around, then we'll be able to get there as soon as possible. So I'm calling for him. This is why. He's like, you know, I'll just take out some villagers. And he's like, well, these archers can't really kill my men at arms that quickly. Um, and I was like, okay, so I'm flanking behind. If I attack, move behind it, we should be in a good spot. And here we go. And right here, that last little pivot. And now I'm in on these archers. And these men at arms are able to get right in on them. These crossbowmen and archers are in on all of these. The knights are finally going down, which is super, super nice. Getting knights from the French are just so, so nice. And I can also see here the um, English forces coming over here. And I'm just like, you know what? These archers can just focus on these. These, uh, the English player should focus on the archers not on these men at arms for the HRE and, and, and mine, um, because my archer is going to be able to absolutely evaporate their back line, do lots of damage. John's doing a great job. He's producing men at arms too, um, and also producing those spearmen to take out those knights, which is super, super helpful. Unfortunately for the English player, it looks like most of their army wasn't in that battle, and then I'm like, okay, well, I have plenty of men at arms. I can just do a little surround over here. Um, there's the attack move. Get as much damage as humanly possible. And now my archers are also free firing on their archers and spearmen as well. And as you can see, that these this man at arm transition into these castle age man at arms, it's just making this so, so nice. I believe these are still feudal age archers. They are. So they cannot do anything to these guys. And the man at arms absolutely clean up everything. I was actually not even aware of how strong men at arms were. Um, because I think at this point, I just 
I stopped even looking over here because um, I realized I was housed. I had some people idle. So I, w I think I started to go back. So I was like, okay, well, these are going to be dead, right? I'll just sacrifice these. Whatever damage they can do, they'll do. And as you can see, back back at the farm, we need to fix a lot of things. Um, do we have a house going down somewhere? We don't. I'm decided to build a a fort mid map. I have a <laughs> I have a house in the middle of the map because um, I really want to take a little bit of map control. Um, and here comes even more of an army. I think that's this is what I got unhoused. I have a lot of food. I know that, but I I think I looked back and I was like, damn, they lasted way longer than I thought they would. And look at I still have some. I still had nine to come out. I was like, those they they dove the entire town center they kept getting peppered by everything and i still had i still had men at arms left i was absolutely shocked so i was like okay perfect we're sitting in a good spot here we're hanging out i built another farm over here one farm over here we have plenty of wood production we're starting to cook in terms of these villagers we're getting up to a, a nice level um constant villager production out of this one we have constant villager production out of this one we have tons on gold as well um I believe, yeah, I threw down even two more barracks so I can produce five minute arms at a time. And we have two crossbowmen ability as well. Honestly, you could probably throw down even another barracks. This keep does provide a proxy um, production building um, and it produces siege forward, which is also another benefit of it. So I'm like, you know what? I have so many men at arms and there's no way after that last attack they can do anything to me at this point. Um, I finally upgraded my longbowmen. So here we have, we have crossbowmen, which I honestly don't even really need anymore because there's not really much armor um, on the other side. I'm like, John, I'm just gonna take out this damn cavalry school so we don't have to worry about it anymore. And we can just do infinite damage to the French player right now with the army that we have because we just took out their, their larger army and we knew that the French player was not gonna be able to reproduce anything close to that. As you can see, 30 archers into 30 men at arms is not gonna be a good day. And even though they do have crossbowmen, my archers were on them almost instantly. And at this point, I believe, yes, I have, look at all these upgrades for the men at arms coming in. We have even, we have even these upgrades coming in. So these men at arms are so tanky. So I'm able to just to dive as much as I want, leave my archers in the back line, and I'm allowing John to just take out this with his. He's building a ram, but my men at arms are absolutely decimating this archer mass in the back the archer mass has stopped kiting backward which has allowed my men at arms to absolutely clatter them in the backhand side and john just able to use his men at arms to tank and clean up the town center um, i'm still trying to do my best to produce as much things as humanly possible so we have more men at arms streaming across the map we're in a good spot there and more of these guys are in the queue streaming out from all five of these I realize now how important production buildings are, um, so I will do my best to continue to do so. And honestly, I know I'm leaving, probably gonna be leaving the English um, in the next season, but man, their, their uh, men at arms are so much fun to play. I never really went into them nearly as much as I should have. Um, I'll give pros a bunch of shit for not going into the correct composition, but then not judge myself the same way. So have to be a little bit more, have to be better on that. Now we do have trade set up here for the English player. A unique uh, thing, you don't really see trade usually out of the English, but hey, it is what it is. Now I start to see this level go up. I start to see this go up and I go, oh, well, I could just drop. So I see John dropping the L's back, but he's not doing it under the protection of anyone, which I think this English player is gonna be able to see. It's a bit ambitious, but I'm like, I can definitely drop the Berkshire Palace, 100%. And with everything going, where's the wall? wall? There it is. John picks up a cheeky few villagers uh, for his trouble, getting down, um, getting down some nice relics. I mean, at this point, the men at arms and everyone have just stopped. So they, I feel like we start to macro on the back end of this. This L's back is gonna have to be canceled for sure. Um, and this is when we start to move out. I see the trade, and I'm like, okay, well. There's nothing really else here for the this player. And I think we take out these last few things here. We take out that um, trader really quick. But as you can see, with these Molotovs in pocket, we do a great job. So now I see that the L's back. I think John was like, hey, heads up. If you're dropping a 
um, something over here. They're gonna be able to get you. We got some mangoes back here as well, just to really seal the deal. John's got some trebs going out. Don't think we're gonna deal with that too much, but as you can see, the White Tower is gonna be doing absolutely nothing for our English friend over here. We have a very large mass, 34 men at arms, sprinting towards their base. And now, unfortunately, my villagers decide to take a fun little route this way, um, which is super unfortunate. They decide to do a little drive by and run by of all the archers. Luckily, my men at arms start to flow in. So we're sitting in a good spot. I see the mango over here, and that's when I send this battalion to go. I'm like, oh, just get it up. Yes, it gets a nice shot off, but now the mango is going to be absolutely destroyed. We have my mangoes sitting over here in the back line as well. Um, but the main thing is, is I want to make sure that this Berkshire Palace goes up um, as quickly as humanly possible. At this point, since we absolutely throttled the French player, I'm less worried about what's going on back at home. So I'm starting to let a few of these resources build up, but I do um, clear it out pretty quickly. I believe I start just man in arms productions as much as I can. Yeah, here we go. We just start producing as many as we can. And the more food I get in, uh, I'm just slamming Q down. And there's the GG's. Um, doesn't even get the Berkshire drop up. So that's a, that's one of the, thank you so much for watching. Um, thank you for all the comments. Tell me how I can get even better. Um, things I could do, small things I should focus on throughout the game. I'm open to anything. And also, what series you guys, guys want to see? Let me know in the comments below, uh, and I will and I will be sending out a poll uh, at the start of season five for which civilization I will do be doing next. If you have made it this far into the video, thank you so much, and if you have enjoyed, please do subscribe and like the video. It helps me out immensely, and I love you all. Peace.